Engineers do not design bridges to stand up. As you've just heard, I'm a civil engineer by training, although I've been involved in the business application of information technology for nearly 30 years and in ERP for 23 years. But my grounding is in civil engineering. 20 years ago, I set out to bring, quote, the disciplines of engineering into the IT in industry. And it was not long before I realized that engineers do not design bridges to stand up. They design them not to fall down. And because engineers design bridges not to fall down, they almost never fall down. And you will probably recall this bridge failure in Minneapolis in August 2007, where at rush hour, the bridge collapsed, killing 14 people with over 100 injured. Within minutes of that event, it was on radio and television worldwide and it was in the next issues of all the major newspapers. Why? Because the failure of a bridge like that is so completely outside our experience. We do not expect bridges to fall down. And I would suggest for your consideration that the people who drove on that bridge did not stand at one side, wondering whether they could get across before the bridge fell down and phoned their loved ones to say, well, I'm going to cross this bridge. I'm not sure I'm going to make it. They went onto that bridge with absolute certainty that their lives would be safe. And it was an absolute traumatic experience for society at large to see that bridge collapse for apparently no reason. And yet we have IT projects fail all the time. And so I'm here to tell you today that you should design your ERP implementations not to fail. So I'm going to talk a lot about failure because I want you to leave this conference with a clear assurance that the best way to achieve a successful outcome with your ERP or in fact any IT implementation or in fact any business improvement implementation is a clear vision of the future and design against failure. And if you design this bridge not to fall down, you will consider the abutments and you will look for planes of weakness and either remove or strengthen them. You will consider the aerodynamics of the deck and make sure that the deck will not fly off under any uh, wind or hurricane condition. You will consider the chemical properties of the concrete and make sure that it will withstand the corrosion from the sea which is just over that horizon. And, and, and. And when you have considered everything that could possibly cause that bridge to, do, to fall down and you have designed it out of the solution, you will have a bridge that will not fall down. You will have success by engineering against failure. And ERP implementations are no different. If you are not prepared to talk about failure, failure is almost guaranteed. I'd like to talk a bit about vision and I'd like to talk a bit about my father and as you can see my profile is in some ways similar to his profile. I regard him as a great man. He laid the foundation for what I'm sharing with you today. In 1981, after having a triple heart bypass and being unconscious on the operating table for nearly eight hours, he came out and his language was so garbled that most people wrote him off. And yet he had the vision to sponsor me for an investment, the value of roughly two Jaguar motor cars, which was a lot of money in those days, still a lot of money in actual fact, for his only son to buy one of the first desktop computers to process the results of my PhD research. I taught myself how to use that computer I wrote a lot of my own software, I learned things about hardware, and I came up with a concept for using that computer to computerize his business, and I did it in such a way that in 12 months his business turnover doubled for a man in his 70s that most people had written off. 
And that's the vision that I want to share with you today. You can use information technology generally and ERP to add huge value provided you align it strategically. I'm going to share with you today some of the lessons that I've learned in these years of seeking to learn how to implement ERP really well, some of the mistakes that people make and how to overcome them. The fact that I'm going to talk about failure quite a lot is simply a reflection of what I've just shared with you. A little bit more background. When I was three years old, I used to enjoy helping my father around the house and the garden, and he was putting up a trellis, uh, a rack to, to grow uh, plants on, and he dropped a steel plant uh, pole and it fell and split my skull open and I still have a ridge in my skull to prove it. Out of that I developed an abhorrence of failure, a preoccupation with present, preventing failure and achieving success. And that has given me a good grounding for what I'm sharing with you today, how to prevent ERP failure in order to achieve ERP success. I want to take a bit of a side journey. In this process about 20 years ago I realized that an absolutely vital requirement for successful IT and ERP implementations was strategic alignment. I wrote a paper on the importance of aligning IT with business strategy and then I found that I had some difficulty defining what I meant by strategy. After some research, I came across the work of Professor Malcolm MacDonald, who says that strategy is doing the right things and tactics is doing things right. And if you do the right things well, you will thrive. If you do the right things not so well, you will survive. If you do the, right, the wrong things, your organization will die. It's only a matter of how quickly. And it is so that there have been a number of instances in the information technology industry over the last 30 years where large organizations have done the wrong things very well indeed and got into se severe difficulties. Perhaps the classic was IBM in the late 80s and early 90s where they wiped off 100 million US dollars a day off their Wall Street valuation every business day for five years by backing the mainframe against the desktop computer. And so when one looks at the IT industry, one must realize that it is an industry that is still growing and one must realize that there are promises that have been made that have not all been kept. And accordingly, one should be circumspect and careful and thoughtful before one makes major investment decisions to make sure you're listening to the right voices and the right opinions. And so we find that strategy is effectively the right things done right. That will cause your organization to thrive. If you like, in another way, strategy is the essence of why an organization exists and how it thrives. And so as I speak to you for the rest of this session about strategy, please remember this definition. The essence of why the organization exists and how it thrives. There are many other meanings that people put on the word strategy, but that is the way I'm using it. So let's step back to information technology now. An industry in crisis. The South African Financial Mail reported some years ago, 19 out of 20 ERP implementations do not deliver what was promised. And while I'm sure that most of you understand the term ERP, for anyone who doesn't, it means Enterprise Resource Planning System. It's a big composite software system that is used for managing businesses today. It's also a general term for any business information system that falls within the ambit of financial logistics, uh, procurement, inventory, etc. We then find that there are reports in the marketplace, very quiet reports, unlike the bridge when an IT project fails, it's not front page news, but uh, it's alleged that some years ago, Michaels wrote off a seven year, half billion dollar project, 400 million dollars, both ERP projects, a web portal and also an ERP. Now those are 
reports that uh, one can find if one looks for them, but they're certainly not published. And the reality is that uh, when something goes wrong with an IT project, it's all too easy to press the delete key. But if we delete a building, this is what happens. We can see the building come down and we can see the rubble being removed. When an IT system is demolished, it is no different to a building except that the damage is psychological. It's to the psyche and the fabric of the business. It's people who are demoralized for having put in huge amounts of work that they now find to have been futile. And therefore, one should not summarily scrap an existing system unless one is absolutely certain that it's the right thing to do. And I hope by the end of the session, you will have some more thoughts about why you might want to create that sort of rubble in your organization or do something else. A couple of years ago reported a survey by Gartner. Most organizations are not making better decisions than they did five years ago despite huge investments in business intelligence solutions sitting on top of ERP solutions and I will share with you in the moments ahead some of the reasons why this happens. So there's a need for a new approach and I want to advocate and, and suggest to you that that approach is an engineering approach. What we are looking for in ERP is a reliability of sustainable implementation that is absolutely every bit as dependable as the reliability of bridges and other engineering structures. It should be so that when an organization is faced with a collapse and failure of an ERP system that it should be front page news. We should be willing to talk about these things because it's only by talking about them that we learn the lessons. So what's not an engineering approach? When I was a child, I used to get into my bed and, and go to sleep and uh, sometimes I would have a dream in which I would stand on a chair and I would flap my arms like wings and I would just float around the room and talk to people. Nobody else have a dream like that? It's quite fun. However, if I were to get on top of one of those buildings and flap my arms and, and jump off, I would probably be dead. At the very least, I would be very broken. So an engineering approach is not to imagine things that are not real. And all too often ERP and IT projects fail because people imagine themselves doing things with computer systems that computer systems cannot do and that it is the human beings who need to execute. And so in going forward, the first thing to watch for is that your goals are realistic and to the extent that they require the involvement of human beings, which is substantial, you know how the human beings are going to do what is necessary to deliver the value that you're proposing. Some of you by now might be thinking that I'm perhaps a little bit negative about information technology. I'm talking about failure. I want to stress that I'm standing here before you today because it is absolutely fundamental to my beliefs that information systems and ERP in particular can and should add huge value to business. 